Out Tse Tung's insanity, very much like any other government bureaucrat, he wanted to stamp out his failures. And so what he did was he created enforcers called the Red Guards, an army of children and young idiot adults who were used to kill or beat up anyone not towing the Maoist line. Teachers were first targeted, like they are today on campuses. Any intellectual, educators targeted. Did you know that any artifacts of Chinese history were targeted? And a favorite method of these people was to whip their elders with the heavy metal buckles on their leather belts. The violence began at the bottom. Everything was very carefully planned at the top. There were constant messages going from the party, the Communist Party, to the students. The beatings, the beatings, the beatings. I'll tell you more about that. How the students first confronted the teachers for not conforming uh, to the political correctness and repeating the big lie. And then how they were tortured and killed. And you say, well, what does this have to do with today, Michael? Where are you going with this? Is this nuts? Why aren't we talking about the election? I am talking about the election. Because there's only one man on the stage who can stop this. I know how things begin, and I know how they end. And unless this madness of political correctness, I don't even like the word, unless this madness of Maoism is stopped in this country, the worst is yet to come. Now, what I've just said to you is all about today's show. And it's all from my forthcoming book, Government Zero. I'm going to repeat it over and over again at the risk of your displeasure. I've documented this because I want to stop the New Reich if I can. I want to help you stop the New Reich if you can. We are fighting for our life and death. That's our freedom. It is about our freedom. Because Mao's China was all about no freedom. It was about one man rule. It was a lot, uh, very much like Jerry Brown's California. Very much like San Francisco. One man rule. Anyone in San Francisco who knows that the leaders are liars and thieves, who dare says one word, is excommunicated. They're not invited to the opera opening by those throwback women who run it. They're not invited anywhere if they don't belong to the Maoists who run this city. The same at the state level. You can build a railroad to nowhere that costs billions of dollars, that pays off cronies. A railroad to nowhere. And by the way, speaking of railroads, I saw another news story last night that's astonishing. Communist China was just given a contract to build a high-speed train between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Not an American company under Chairman Obama, but a Chinese company got the contract to build a high-speed railway between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. What happened to our, our own manufacturing ability? We don't have the companies that can lay tracks and build railroad cars? Of course we do. Then why was a company from China picked? Follow the money. See who lobbied for it. Investigate Madeleine Albright's ties to China. See if she's connected. Investigate senators whose husbands make billions of dollars a year from China trade. See if they're connected through front companies. And then you'll get the answer about why Trump is in their sights. This is the savage nation, Obama and Islam, communist China, Mao Zedong, Maoism, the New Reich. I'll be back. Join the savage nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. In the last hour, I told you that many in Obama's administration admire Mao Zedong, if are not, not uh, covertly Maoists, who believe in the power of one man to rule the country, if not the world. And I said it was Samantha Powers. I was mistaken. It was Anita Dunn. Do you remember her? Do you remember how she glorified Mao Zedong? Listen carefully. We pulled a soundbite when she was first appointed by Chairman Obama. Listen. In 1947, when Mao Zedong was being challenged within his own party on his plan, to basically take China over. Chiang Kai-shek and the Nationalist Chinese held the cities. They had the army, they had the air force, they had everything on their side. And people said, how can you win? How can you do this? How can you do this? 
against all of the odds against you. And Mao Zedong said, you know, you fight your war and I'll fight mine. All right, so he did it by killing people who opposed him. That's the bright college gal, Anita Dunn, an open Maoist at the time. I don't know what she is today. I'm sure she capitalized uh, on her Maoism, as do most in the Senate, where there's one man rule, there's a chance for great corruption. Because all you got to do is buy off a party official above you, and he kicks up to the party official above him, and he kicks up to the party official above her, and it goes all the way up to the top. It's very much like organized crime. And that's why we in America have enjoyed uh, a great government for a very long period of time until it's become what is now basically a, a Ponzi scheme and a criminal empire, which runs off one-man rule where there's no checks and balances. There's no checks and balances. Witness what Chairman Obama just did with the Iran deal. The American people oppose it by a large majority, only 20% support giving Iran nuclear weapons. Think about that. Where's our representation? Congress opposed it, yet he used legal, legalistic maneuvering to screw the American people. So if that's not one man rule, I'd like to know what is. Now, wait a minute, we wake up, I told you how it works. He picked the first openly homosexual secretary to, to run the army today. I told you he will not stop. I told you he's a madman. I told you he's a psychopath. You know, you don't understand that a person could be insane and not look crazy. You don't understand a definition of psychopaths, do you? We have an openly mad president who is doing everything he can as quickly as he can to decimate everything this country stood for, stands for, and would stand for. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The reason they're ripping Donald Trump apart is because he is a nationalist, and nationalism is anathema to the New Reich. The New Reich cannot tolerate nationalism, especially in America and Israel. They can uh, accept nationalism in Iran, for example. I'll explain that on another day. How do they accept nationalism in China? How do they accept nationalism in Japan? Well, the answer is they can't do anything about those countries. But since this country is filled with drug addicts and uh, people who are addicted to entertainment and sports, it is the most easily manipulated country since Uruguay was uh, many, many decades ago. The country is sort of like a South American banana republic in terms of the electorate. And so when Obama comes to power, he picks open Marxists, open Maoists like Anita Dunn, who was a strategist and communications director for Obama in the beginning. You know where she is now? She's at SKDK Knickerbocker, a PR firm in Washington, D.C. She's a contributor to MSNBC. Do you understand what I am putting together for you now? Do you understand when I talk about the government media complex, how it's all a seamless Reich? Do you get the picture? How dangerous it is and how dangerous he is? So I pulled a soundbite for you on Anita Dunn, just so you don't ever forget who's actually inside the White House, not quite as overt as Anita Dunn, but listen to her back before she got uh, thrown out because of this. Listen carefully. And then the third lesson and tip actually come from two of my favorite political philosophers, Mao Zedong and Mother Teresa, not often coupled with each other, but, but the Titter, two Titter. people that I turn to most. Okay, to you got the picture. Mao Zedong, a person she turns to most, a man who was responsible for the torture, the systematic starvation, torture and murder of 45 million fellow Chinese. So if you think when Bill Ayers and his friends said that they'd like to kill 30 million Americans, he was kidding. If you think that that thought is now dead inside the left-wing cabal that runs America, you're crazy. If you don't think that they'd like to line you up and shoot you, you're nuts. You're out of your mind. Because I see it for what it is, and I know how dangerous these people are. And I also know that they have not yet been stopped. Nothing has stopped them in their dire plans. Even selling America and Israel out to Iran did not stop them. That's with the alleged power of the Israeli lobby. That's with the alleged power of the uh, Zionist media. That's with the alleged power of the Jewish lobby. It shows you how powerless these phrases really are. They have no meaning. 
if the uh, Israeli lobby was so powerful and if Jews controlled the media, how did Obama get away with selling this, this deal to Iran? It just shows you how the anti-Semites are, are working around the clock along with Ann Coulter to undermine Jews in the country. I see she backtracked or tried to backtrack by doubling down. And she said anyone who's attacking her for saying those effing Jews is a liberal who wants massive immigration. Well, Anne, as you well know, I've been opposing massive immigration before you were even on the scene, Anne. When you were just a little socialite running around Washington, seeing who you could date to get ahead and make a book deal, Anne, I was talking about borders, language, and culture, Anne. You don't remember that, do you? So you can't categorically go on Megyn Kelly's show and say that everyone who opposes your despicable comments about Jews is a liberal, Ann, unless you're lying again. So when were you lying, Ann, when you said effing Jews or when you say that all those who are offended by you uh, are liberals, Ann? When were you lying, then or now? How anybody could ever publish this creature again, I don't know. How does she differ from Obama? How does she differ from, from Anita Dunn? How does she differ from anyone that we criticize on a daily basis on this show? If she will lie around the clock to, ma to maintain a position of being a loudmouth and an embarrassing loudmouth in the media, how does she differ from the leftists that we've come to detest? When she'll attack anyone who says, no, Ann, foul ball, you don't say effing Jews in the middle of the night in a drunken tweet which many people are saying that's what happened, and then covered up by saying, oh, anyone who opposes you is a liberal. No, Ann, some of us are not liberals. And we find your comments about the effing Jews really repugnant. And anybody who would publish you is in your category. Anybody who would ever have you on a show agrees that the effing Jews control America. And I've been getting anti-Semitic emails since then from people who will not identify themselves, saying things about Jews, saying they agree with Ann. You cannot believe the Nazi hatred she has uh, made legitimate. You have no idea what she just did. You have no, if I ever read you an email that was sent to me, your hair would stand up. Congratulating Ann Coulter for saying these things about Jews. She's made it legitimate to attack Jews. She's done grave damage. Grave damage to the Jewish people. Make no mistake about it. I will show you some emails one day, but it's not that big a deal to me. So now let's go back to the topic at hand. The topic at hand is Obama a Muslim because Trump wouldn't stop to speak a member of uh, one of the audience who said Obama's a Muslim, blah, blah, blah. And all Trump said was we're going to be looking at that a lot of different things. So right away, the members of the Reich went crazy today, including Christie, who has no ratings whatsoever. Christie embraced Obama on the tarmac. We knew who he was. He's uh, uh, you know, a member of the, of, the, of the commission. Let's put it to you that way member of the commission. Now, uh, a panelist comes on um, the show affectionately called the Martha Washington Show, a woman who poses as the head of the great conservative, uh, the conservative light in America, Megyn Kelly, who got very far using you and now is jumping to, the, uh, uh, to Hollywood to finish off her career. Listen to this interchange in clip number two. There is a lot of changes and a lot of things that have been exposed about uh, uh, Obama um, and, uh, you know, his past history and Reverend Wright and all these other things. When McCain was... But well, he's not a Muslim. Well, we don't... No, he's not. Well, no, we do know. We do know that, yeah. Well, okay, but there, all of these ties didn't come about until... Later on, I would say, until late after, the, way the, after no, 2008. No, go ahead. So the, the president really has said like. repeatedly that he is a Christian, that he is not a Muslim. And this was, this was made a campaign issue back in 2008. Oh, shut up. And Just shut up. Take your cheerleader look, looks and shove them back into the mirror. You're a vampire. You're bringing up John McCain as a, a great example of a man who stood up for America. McCain threw the election, as did Romney, you idiot, you. McCain could have won. But he showed himself to be a stooge of the, of the New Reich, as did Romney through the, the second two debates. You know that. You know that, Kelly. You know that. P.T. Barnum knows that. P.T. Barnum knows that. Shame on you, Roger Ailes, for going along with this. I'm proud to tell you I am banished from Fox News. 
I'm proud to tell you I will never go on Fox News, even if there was a, a seat change at that network and they said, oh, Savage, your new book, Government Zero, come on, we want to attack you. Come on and defend Government Zero.